Okay, hello everybody and welcome back to another plant chores video. I feel like I haven't done one in a hot minute, so I am simply just tackling some of the plant chores that I have racked up on my spring <laughs> plant to-do list, which I showed you in my last plant chore video. I've knocked out a few of these, but I still have a lot to do, of course. It's, it's ongoing and I already have new things that I need to add to that list. The first thing I'm going to be sitting down and doing is a little project that I've been really excited about because it's just a little bit different from my usual plant chores and I get to try something a little bit new and that is restaking, actually repotting and restaking my vanilla orchid. This is my cutie patootie variegated vanilla orchid and I adore this plant so much. I think that it's just the cutest thing and it's honestly been so easy to grow. However, as you can see, it's been growing off of its um, moss pole for a little while now and I really need to address it. So today I'm actually going to be upgrading it to a type of pole that I've never tried before and I'm really excited about it. And that is a tree fern pole. So there's a lot of talk about tree fern fiber lately and I do not have really any experience with it, honestly. I do have some of the substrate that I want, I'm wanting to try out. And then I have some of these poles and I also have some kind of like mounting boards. They're kind of like this, but just um, like more rectangular or square pieces of the tree fern fiber, which I'm thinking I'm gonna mount an orchid on. But anyways, I have um, a few of these just like totems or poles. There's two in this pack, so they're thinner than it's appearing. Um, they're kind of narrow and tall, but I think that that is going to be absolutely perfect for this little vanilla orchid. You know, I just want something kind of understated, but also something that it can grow into. I feel like this is just the perfect thing for it. So I'm really excited to try it out. I know that a lot of people are using tree fern fiber for their potting mixes now and also for propagations. Apparently plants love rooting into this stuff and I think that it's a more like sustainable option. From what I've heard, I would need to do, it says sustainable, but I would need to do more research into that because I'm just kind of regurgitating what I've heard. Um, anyways, really excited to try all of these tree fern fiber products. These were sent to me by a company called Northern Gecko. They have a bunch of these tree fern um, supplies and also things like high quality sphagnum moss. So uh, I'll link them down below. If you're in Canada, you can check them out if you're looking for any of these products. Anyways, I'm excited to get started. The first thing that I need to do is remove the orchid from its current situation, which is this moss kind of plank thing. I did just wet it, so I'm hoping I'll be able to just pull the roots out, but I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to salvage roots out of sphagnum moss poles. They could break off, we'll see. And this plant is actually just potted in sphagnum moss. I've just had it in sphagnum moss since I've owned it. Um, and I'm going to be upgrading it to a soil mix today with a lot of orchid bark. Um, so like a chunky kind of soil mix. I did look up some care info for this plant before this video to make sure that potting it into like a chunky potting mix would be okay. And apparently it is. So I'm just going to go for it. Okay. So I'm just going to remove everything that I can. I have this clipped onto my wire grid in my greenhouse cabinet, so that's why those clips are on there. Got some plant velcro to remove. Oop! Okay, the whole pole just wants to come out. Dragonfly clips. And I guess I'm just going to pull the whole thing out. my goodness the roots look so good wow I don't know what I was expecting but I wasn't expecting like nice white fluffy roots like that like it looks so satisfying I'm also trying to work smarter and I'm recording a reel at the same time so yeah kind of 
weird to be filming both, but hopefully I'll get some usable footage for the reel too. Anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and what am I going to do? I think I'm just going to give a tug and see if I'm able to just pull the roots out. Oh my gosh, that one came out. Oh, it would be so nice if it just came off clean. It would be so nice. Oh, it's just coming out. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy about that. It's literally just coming out. Wow. Oh, I've been putting this off because I thought that that was going to be such a pain in the butt. And that literally took like 10 seconds. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to gently remove the sphagnum moss. I feel like it's gonna come off really easily from here as well. Ooh, it's the kind that kind of smells good too. <laughs> I love that. It's because this plant came from Plant Haven Toronto like a while ago, like a year ago, but their sphagnum moss always smells so good. I don't know what brand they use, but love it. Oh yeah, I have two plants in here as well. It's because I broke this plant when I was first potting it up. Like I snapped a piece off, so I just stuck it into the sphagnum and it rooted and now I have two plants in here, which is kind of fun. Wow, these roots are just like so nice. You know how some roots are just satisfying? That's how I feel about these ones. And yeah, the sphagnum is just like coming off beautifully. Not like a Hoya. So this is what the roots are looking like. Beautiful, gorgeous, 10 out of 10, honestly. Okay, so I did grab a pot. Where did I put it? Right here. I figured I would use this pot. It's one of the taller, but like narrower <laughs> orchid pots. I really like these ones that are just kind of tall, especially for plants. Well, especially for alocasia because I feel like it stabilizes them better, but also for plants that need like a trellis or uh, any type of climbing support, I feel like you can put it in a little bit deeper and it stabilizes it a little bit more. So I'm going to be using this one today. Um, although I am going to need a very heavy cover pot, like a nice ceramic pot to put this in eventually because you know this is just not going to be supported by this very effectively because this is a, a massive um pole for it that's just because this grows so fast and i don't know i just want to see it grow tall that's why i do have a shorter version of this but i chose the taller one just because just based on like this plant's growing habits and i'm just anticipating for the future because i don't really want to have to remove it once it's latched into there you know so I could always repot it in the future, but I don't necessarily want to have to change the pull out. Ooh, I haven't opened these before. I'm so curious about this. Oh, there's a perforated thing. I'm too late, but it's good to know. I'll pull it on this side, maybe. Oh. Wow. Satisfying. Oh, shoot. My memory card's full. Okay. Give me a second here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just, you're not gonna be able to see the top of the totem. Well, maybe I can lift you up a little bit right now, but I'll obviously show you the full thing at the end. Okay, oh my gosh, <laughs> it takes up like most of the pot, but that's fine because the roots can also grow into this, you know, so it doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to add some of my potting mix in. I 
I really hope this plant is going to be happy in here because, like I said, I love my vanilla orchid so much. It's just such a cutie little plant. They can get really massive, like really long vines. The leaves can get massive too, but I think that's more of like if you grow them outdoors, the leaves will get massive type of thing. Mine is not grown outdoors. Although maybe I could put it outside for the summer. That would be a good idea. Okay, wow, it actually does hold itself up. Crazy, okay. So now I'm just going to place my plant in. I guess the roots are kind of attached, so. Actually, I'm gonna detach them and do it separately. So I want the front of it to be here. I think that's backwards. There we go. I'll obviously have to attach it to the pole after it's potted in here. Okay, so that's gonna be good. I'm just going to fill up the pot now. Well, it's kind of like getting hooked onto the fibers already. I like don't even need to hold it. And here's to my mama. Had to listen to all that drama. These vanilla orchids are honestly so fun to grow because you can do so many different things with them. I've seen, you know, people grow them on moss poles. I've seen people grow them on trellises. I've seen people just like wind them around their homes. Um, you know, people, a lot of people grow them outside, up trees, and yeah, you can just do a lot of different things. I really like them on trellises too just like a Hoya trellis or whatever, because it just keeps a lot of the focus on the beautiful leaves, which is really nice. And I love the leaves on this plant so much. They're almost Hoya-like, honestly, like they're very thick and waxy, which is just a really nice and satisfying leaf type. Okay, I'm just making sure all of the soil is kind of pushed down there. Should be able to see. I don't know how heavy this pole will be once I wet it, but right now it's like very lightweight, which is kind of nice. And I guess that's why it's um, not toppling the pot over too. Okay, I think that's pretty good for the potting mix. I'm in love with this already. In love. I'm gonna be obsessed with checking and seeing if it's rooted in yet. Okay, so. Now I need to, I think I'm gonna go with plant Velcro to attach the vines on and then this will root in eventually and it won't need any Velcro because it will just be supporting itself so I'll be able to remove it. But just for now, I'm going to Velcro 
Velcro it on. Okay, I have all these random pieces that I'm gonna try to go ahead and use. And then, I don't even need that last attachment. And once it gets to the top, I will probably um, just loop it back down again so that eventually this will just become like covered or I could like wind it around each side because this is like square, there's four sides. So I don't plan on chopping it when it gets to the top or anything. I'll just like keep winding it around here or going up and down or whatever. Okay, and then I think I'm going to do the last one up here. gosh I love it so much oh I'm so happy with this this is like the most excited I've been about a plant project for a while I'm so so stoked on this I can't wait to see it start rooting in here and everything we're gonna take it to the shower and um, wet it because I'm just really curious of what this pole is gonna be like when it's wet so let's go ahead and do that quickly Okay, there's actually other plants sitting in my shower right now that I forgot about. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to water this in the sink. I'm actually going to see if it will take if I just kind of squirt it with water. I'm not sure if it will because it's so dry right now. If it's anything like sphagnum, then it won't want to take. But I'm just going to try it out anyways. And if not, I'll probably just use my spray bottle to kind of moisten it. And then it will want to absorb the water better. We'll see though. Oh yeah, it doesn't really want to <laughs> absorb. <laughs> you can literally see the water sitting like a pleb up there. <laughs> it's not absorbing at all. Okay, well maybe. I know it will once I get it moist, but yeah, it's like sphagnum. It's hydrophobic when it's like bone dry. So I'm gonna do what I do with my moss poles. If they're super dry, I just give them like an overall spray with my electric sprayer. And then I leave them for a few minutes and then I come back and it's just a lot more susceptible to absorbing the water. Clean some of the leaves off while I'm here. And I'm also going to water the plant too in a second. Okay, yeah, I can see it's already absorbing water. Just going to water in the pot here too. Okay, yeah, now it is totally 
absorbing the water. So that was easy. Just going to give it a few squirts before I try and fit it back in the cabinet. It's either going to be just hitting the roof of the cabinet or it's not going to fit in there at all. So we'll find out which one it's going to be momentarily. I think that's going to be pretty good for the water in the pole, honestly. Okay, so this is the finished result of what it looks like, and I love it. Like I said, I'm so excited. I'm definitely going to be creeping in on this and checking the progress, especially because it's in a new substrate too. I just want to make sure that everything is going okay with this plant. So yeah, I'm going to be keeping a close eye on it. Now for the interesting part to see if it's going to fit back into the cabinet or if I'm going to have to grow it outside of the cabinet now. Okay, so I'm wanting it to be in this corner, but we'll see because it's going to be very tight if it does fit at all. Oh my gosh, it literally just fits, like barely. <laughs> Okay, my Chironier randomly came tumbling out of here, but it could not be more perfect of a fit. It's kind of crazy. It's like just touching the top, literally. That's the top of it there. <laughs> it's so crazy. It looks so good though. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy with this. Let me know what you think down below, or if you've tried anything like this, I would love to hear your experience too. Okay, I'm making a huge mess here already. So before I clean up, I wanna go ahead and do one moss pole extension, and that is going to be for my Philodendron Majestic, because she is literally growing right off the moss pole already, and I swear I just extended this not long ago. So yeah, she's growing like crazy. She's just on a thickly pole, as you can see, just the regular size, I believe, with like the four holes in it. Um, so I've got another one right here and I'm just gonna be popping that on, filling it with moss, should be quick and simple. I just wanna get that going so I can kind of, you know, pin her to it and she can start rooting into it. My mic is also dying, so I'm racing against that as well, but hopefully it will hold out until I'm done this. So let's see if this goes smoothly this time. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it's going smoothly. I don't know why I was having some trouble the last time I did this. Okay, so I just do it until two rows. Oh, oh my goodness. Until two rows of the like holes or the rectangles are lined up. And then you're just supposed to push in these little tabs and it'll click. Like that. Okay, yeah, and then all I do is just put moss in there and use a chopstick to push it down. I've shown this before, so I'm just gonna speed through this. I'm literally just using the moss that the vanilla orchid was just in. because I don't think it has any pests or anything, so I'm just not worried. And it smells good. I think I might do another chore to tomorrow, so I'll probably end the video right here for now because it is 6.30 p.m. I need to eat and do some editing tonight, so. Actually, I need to do watering tonight too. It's been really hot here. So my plants are all suddenly very thirsty and it's kind of like a shock when the first really hot days start happening because I'm just used to my winter watering routine. So yeah, I have a lot of like catch up watering to do. Okay, now I'm going in with the sphagnum moss from my bin.
Hello. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Although I don't know if you're supposed to add more than three of these, so I don't know if I will be extending it again in the future, but for now, this is what it's looking like. Boop, boop. She's getting to be a big gal, but now she has a lot more room to grow up the pole, which is really nice. Really glad that I got that done. Oh, I need to fasten her as well. Okay, so I'm just going to, I have some dragonfly clips here from the orchid. So dragonfly clip, I'm just going to stick it right there. He'll be able to root in nicely. And the other vine needs to also be attached. This one, oh, go behind here. And they're both already starting to spit out new leaves. So exciting. This plant grows like a freaking weed, I'm telling ya. Okay, there, that one's attached now as well. Okay, perfect. She's all ready to rock. So big, it's hard to show in the frame, but that's much better. Now that's not gonna be stressing me out every time I look at it. Okay, that's gonna be it for tonight. I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay, hello, it is the next day. I actually just brought out my philodendron Florida ghost because I was thinking that I was gonna chop it up. Let me show you her actually. So she's huge. She is mostly white, honestly. Like the majority of her leaves are white or cream or like very light green like this. She only has really green leaves at the very top. Anyways, I have been wanting to propagate this plant for a while, like chop the whole thing up just because she's growing so wild. But once I took her out and was looking at her, I was kind of like, mm, I don't know if I can do it. I kind of just want to leave her. Like she's so big and beautiful and happy. And since she has so many leaves that are just white, I don't think that those are going to propagate well, if any of them would even survive at all. So I'd probably just end up losing most of the plant and yeah, I don't know. I'm probably just gonna try to find a spot for her where she can just live her best wildlife. So right now I just have her on the side of the couch as you can see, because she really just doesn't fit in the spot that she's been living in um, on that like narrow shelf in my bedroom. So yeah, I was planning on doing that, but I think I'm just going to reroute here and <laughs> leave her alone. I found a couple of small plants that have been rooting that I think I'm finally gonna pot up today that I'm really excited about. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you those. Okay, so the plants that need to be potted up today are my Justenia pothos, which is a pothos with kind of like lime green variegation. It, oh, it's not even focused, goodness, there we go. Yeah, the variegation comes in kind of like chartreuse. I really don't see this one very often, but I love pothos so much. So I was really excited when I got this cutting a few months ago, or maybe just like a couple of months ago, actually. I've been rooting, I originally rooted it in water and it rooted up and then, I don't know, the water just ran dry. It was in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet and I think with the fan blowing and the cabinet was like heating up a lot, it just dried up all the water and of course the roots died off. So I rerooted it in perlite and that's gone really well and been successful and I have not let it completely dry out thankfully. So I actually have a couple of baby leaves. 
there's one and then there's another one on the way coming from that one. So yeah, it's really happy now. I'm very glad that I didn't lose this plant because I'm just so excited to watch it grow. And I'm actually going to be putting it on a pole as well. I've prepared one of my thickly poles. This is the Grow Pole Small Pro, I believe. Yeah, I've been using these poles like crazy, just the small size ones because I have so many baby plants, it seems. So yeah, I'm gonna be potting it up into terracotta with the pole and I have the pole already because I know I make these like, it feels like in every video. So I'm sure that gets boring. So I just made the poles ahead of time. And then the second plant that we're gonna be potting today is my variegated heartleaf philodendron. Look at how cute it is. Oh my goodness, I love this one so much and I'm really, really excited to watch this one grow as well just to see what it's gonna look like. Never grown this plant before. Um, this was sent to me by Charmaine, which was so nice of her and it's been rooting up really well in perlite. It's been very happy. So yeah, I just can't wait. Like I've seen, I've seen a lot of photos of people growing these and they just look so beautiful. So I'm really excited to see what this one is gonna end up looking like. And I'm giving it the exact same setup with the pole and a four inch terracotta pot. So let's just crack into it. Okay, I've just added some potting soil into the bottom of this pole and I'm just going to be popping it in the pot here and then just filling up the pot with some more potting soil. I don't think either of these plants has a very big root system, so hopefully they'll be okay in here. I think they will. I think they will do just fine. All right, we're gonna start with the Jacenia. Well, let's see what's going on in here. I'm gonna kind of loosen it. There we go. Okay, so it mostly just has one big long root, but it does have some secondary roots branching off of it. So it looks really healthy, honestly. I'm just wanting it to be like that. So I'm just gonna hold it in place and fill. I think I'm still gonna try to fit these back into the Mills Botol cabinet. That's where they've been living. So I'll see if I'm able to make that work. Okay, super quick and easy. It's still too young to be fully like attached to the pole, but once it grows, I will be using plant Velcro just to secure it but that's what it's looking like right now. Okay, that's all ready. So now to get her out of here. Again, I'll try to loosen it up a little bit. There we go. Oh, she actually has a few different roots. That's really nice. And she's already like vining a bit. So I'm just gonna try to make that part face the moss pole.
And that is it for that one. Again, it looks so good. I'm so excited to watch this grow, grow up the pole. I feel like this is gonna root into the pole really quickly and just start climbing. So it's gonna be so fun to watch both of these grow. Like, look at how cute little babies. I feel like I'm starting a lot of baby small plants on poles lately. So it's gonna be fun to kind of see where they're at within like the next six months, see how much they grow because I have my larger, more established plants which is very, very nice and I love them so much, but I'm just really excited about all of these small ones that I'm starting. So yeah, it's always fun to just, you know, watch the journey and take lots of pictures and videos so that I can look back because it's just so crazy to see how much your plants have grown. So that's gonna be it for this plant chores video. I hope that y'all enjoyed. Make sure to leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. Also give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.